Alright guys, so here is our next example. So staying with parabolas and writing them in standard form. Okay, we have another problem except, alright, notice um, how it's a little bit different from the previous example. Now we're dealing with a vertex that is not 0, 0, so not a vertex that is at the origin, right? In the past example, our vertex was at the origin, right? We saw what that equation, okay, was going to look like, whether it be horizontal or vertical. Now, okay, the vertex is not at the origin. And take a look at how our equation differs, okay? So notice now that we now have this h and k value, and we know what that stands for because we dealt with circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, right? h and k is just going to be your center or your vertex, right? So it'll be that center point or your vertex point. So again, h and k, that's a little bit different, um, but everything else um, essentially remains the same, except for your focus and directrix. Okay, so now notice on your focus, it's now going to be H plus P, right, comma K. Um, for your directrix, it's going to be X equals H minus P, okay. On the vertical side, same thing, right, your focus is going to be H comma K plus P, right, and your directrix is going to be Y equals K minus P, okay. Um, so if you want to go ahead and write these rules down, you can, all right, but I find it will be most useful to go ahead and just try an example and put these rules to practice. All right, so let's do our first example. All right, guys, so here is our example. Now, before we try this, I highly suggest that you go back and watch the previous video where we were talking about how to write a parabola in standard form when the origin was zero, zero. So if you have not watched that video, uh, please watch that video before trying this problem, all right, because again, it's going to build off each other. All right, so we're given the following um, equation here of a parabola, okay, and they want us to do the following. They want us to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the focus, the directrix, and the value of P. Okay, so our first step, we need to determine, are we dealing with a horizontal or a vertical um, parabola here? Okay, and if you go back to your rules that we just had on the previous screen, we know that since it says X here, right, on the left, X minus 2, right, um, we know that we're going to be dealing with a horizontal parabola here, okay? So it's either going to open this way, to the left, or this way, okay? Um, and we know which way it's going to open because remember, look at this sign right here, it's negative. This is telling us that we're dealing with a negative p-value, okay? So for example, if we rewrite the equation, okay, of a horizontal parabola in standard form, we get the following. I'm going to write it right underneath. We have x minus h equal to 1 over 4p, right? And then in parentheses here, we have y minus k squared, right? This is for a horizontal parabola, all right? And we know that since this is negative here, right, it's going to be opening, right, to the negative side, meaning we're going to have something like this, right? opening to the negative side, all right? Now our first step, we want to go ahead and find the vertex. So this is fairly simple. This is going to be your h and k value, all right? So we know that this is going to be h and this is going to be k, right? So if you pull these out, what do you get? Well, you're gonna get the following, right? So your vertex is going to be, right? Well, h is going to be two, right? And your k is going to be what? Well, it's going to be negative 5, right? Because think about it, if you take these values, plug it in here, right? You get x minus 2, which we have, right? Then take this negative 5 and plug it in here. Well, two negatives make a positive, hence we have positive 5, right? So your vertex here is going to be 2, negative 5, okay? Now, our next step is to go ahead and find the axis of symmetry, all right? So to find the axis of symmetry, right, we know that we have something like this, right? So the axis of symmetry is going to go right through the vertex, which we have right here, right? And it'll be a horizontal line, right? And essentially, we'd fold that up and it would be congruent, right? So that will be our axis of symmetry. Now, what is that going to be, right? So what will our axis of symmetry be here? Okay, well, it's going to be, right, y equals what? It will be y equals negative 5, right? Because remember, this vertex is at 2, negative 5, and if we have a horizontal line going through that, right, it will be y equals negative 5, OK? 
Okay, so our axis of symmetry here is y equals negative 5. Alright, so that's and cross that one off. Now we have the focus. Alright, so let's find the focus. So remember I told you in order to find the focus when you're dealing with a horizontal parabola, you're going to have the following. You'll have h plus p, right? Okay. So what we need to do here is find out what our p value is. So think about it, right? If we have 4p here, what would p have to be in order to get this negative, right, 16? Well, it would have to be negative 4, right? 4 times negative 4 would be negative 16, which we have here, right? So we know that P is going to equal negative 4, right? So P is going to be negative 4. All right, so let's go ahead and just plug this in now. So we know our H value here is going to be 2, right? So we have 2. We determined that our P value is negative 4, so we have negative 4, right? 2 and a negative 4, well, that's going to make negative 2. So this h plus p here is going to be negative 2, right? And then our k, which we know is negative 5. Okay? That's going to be your focus. So let's go ahead and label that as such. So our focus Our last step here, let's find the directrix. Okay? And again, remember what we're going to use here. It's simply just going to be x equals, right? And we're going to have here h minus p, all right? Again, this came from the previous slide, right? So again, our h value is going to be 2, all right? Our p value is negative 4. So look what happens here. We're going to have essentially here 2 minus a negative 4, right? Well, two negatives make a positive, right? And we'll get 6. So our directrix here is going to be x equals um, 6. Okay, so x equals 6. All right, and we essentially just found all these values. Now, let's go a little further with this problem. Let's go ahead and work in reverse. Let's say you're given these values, right? And let's create this equation, right, from these values. Okay. So let me go ahead and graph this, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I went ahead and graphed that information out, and here's what our parabola will look like. Here is our focus at negative 2, negative 5. Okay, here is our vertex at 2, negative 5. Right, and here is our directrix at x equals 6. And I went ahead and wrote the original equation here just so we can compare, okay, the equation that we get, okay, from using these values. Now, remember from past videos, um, I talked about how we can find the equation of any parabola if we're given, okay, the focus and the directrix, all right? And we can do that by using the distance formula, all right? So again, this should be a little bit of review, all right? So essentially what I have to do here is pick any point on this parabola. So I'm just going to pick it here. It doesn't matter where you pick it. Okay? You can pick it anywhere. And what I'm going to do is draw, okay, from this point to this focus a distance, all right? And then from this um, point on the parabola, I'm going to draw a distance going to the directrix. Now notice here it's going to be exactly horizontal. So for example, I'm drawing a perfectly horizontal line okay, to this directrix. All right? So when you do it to the directrix, it's none of this. Right? You're not doing any slanted lines. It's directly horiz um, horizontal. Okay? All right. And essentially what this is saying here is this distance when compared to this distance, will always be the same, no matter where you pick this point on this um, parabola. I could have picked it way up here and did the same thing. Those two distances will always be the same. So knowing that we can use okay, um, the distance formula in order to generate an equation of this parabola. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do is find this distance between these two points, this distance between these two points. Okay, We're going to set them equal to each other and solve them, and that will be our equation. All right? So let's go ahead and do this out. All right? So we're going to call this x1, y1. Okay? This point, we have no idea. We're just going to call it x, y. Okay? However, okay, when we look at our directrix, notice that between this point and this point, they're going to share Okay, a value in common, right? And that's going to be the y value because look, they're going to be exactly the same height. So they're both going to have the same y value, right? And the x value of this is going to be 6. So we're going to have 6, and I'm going to call this 
y. I'm calling it y because it's going to be exactly the same as this, right? So I'm just going to call it y. And we'll call this x2, y2. Right? And this will be x1, y1. So let's go ahead and find both of these distances and set them equal to each other. So we'll find this one first. So in case you forgot what the distance formula is, I'll write it up here, right? We're going to have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, okay? So let's just go ahead and find this distance first. I'll call it uh, distance 1, all right? So let's go ahead and do this. So x2 here we know is going to be x. Okay, x1 is going to be negative 2. However, two negatives, right, will make it positive, so positive 2. Okay, y2 here is going to be y. Okay, and then y1 is going to be negative 5, but again, two negatives make it positive, so positive 5 squared, right? All right, let's go ahead and do the next one. Distance 2. Let's take a look at this. X2 is going to be X, right? So we have X. X1 is going to be 6, so minus 6. All right? Now if we go ahead and look at our Y2, right, we know it's going to be Y. And our Y1 is also Y. Okay, so look here. This is essentially going to just be 0, right? Y minus Y is 0. 0 squared is 0. So this essentially just cancels out. Let's set them both equal to each other now. So we're going to have the square root of, and we have x plus 2 squared plus y plus 5 squared, right? Set it equal to each other. Then we have the square root of x minus 6. This is, again, squared. So we want to get rid of these radicals here. So we're going to square both sides, right? And this cancels. And then we're left with the following, right? x plus 2 squared plus y plus 5 squared equal to, right, x minus 6 squared. Okay? Our next step, we want to go ahead and expand these guys out. So when we expand this out, we're going to get x squared, right, plus 4x plus 4. When we expand this out, we get plus y squared plus 10y plus 25, right, equal to, okay, the same thing. We're going to go ahead and expand this out. So we get x squared minus 12x, right, and then we're going to get here plus 36, okay? So let's go ahead and erase some of this work so we can finish this problem. Essentially what we want to do is start canceling out some of these terms. So let's go ahead and just rewrite this. x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared plus 10y plus 25 equal to x squared minus 12x plus 36. Okay. So let's go ahead and just subtract x squared on both sides, okay, that will cancel, all right, and this will cancel. All right, let's do our 12, our negative 12x, let's do plus 12x, so that cancels, plus 12x, and we know that we're going to get 16x here, okay? Let's subtract our 36, so minus 36, and we get minus 36 here, okay? So again, we're going to have 25 and a negative 36. We know we'll make negative 11, right? So let's go ahead and start rewriting this stuff. We'll have plus 4 plus y squared plus 10y. And we know that this is going to be negative 11. This is all equal to 0, okay? So we can combine this and this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we get 16x, right? So a positive 4 and a negative 11, okay? We know that that's simply just going to be, we'll get negative 7 here, right? So we're going to get negative 7 plus y squared plus 10y, right? Equal 
to zero. Okay? Now, our next step here, all right, is now notice I have a y squared and a y, right? So think about what I'm going to do here. This goes back to completing the square. So if I have y squared, right, plus 10y, okay, and let's go ahead and move these terms over to the right. So I'm going to have minus 16x, right, and then plus 7. Oops. So essentially all I did was just move those terms over to the right. Okay, and I left y squared and plus 10y. Now think about what you're going to do here. Right, remember completing the square, right? So if this is my b value, I do b over 2 squared, which is going to be y squared plus 10y, right? b over 2 squared, that's going to be 5 squared, so plus 25. What we do to one side, we also have to do to the other. So we have negative 16x plus 7 plus 25, okay? All right, so let's go a little bit further here, all right? Let's go ahead and factor this now. So we're going to have the following, y, right? And we'll have plus 5 squared equal to, let's combine now, okay, our like terms here. So we'll have negative 16x. In order to combine these like terms, right, we have 25 plus 7, which we know is going to be 32. All right, we're almost done. Now, okay, we essentially have this equation written out. We just need to go ahead and rearrange it now. So let's erase this work one more time. Again, this is rather a lengthy problem, but it's good practice. All right, so think about how we can get this to look like this, right? So think of a couple moves you could do here. So I'm going to rewrite it as y plus 5, right? And this will be squared equal to, and now we have negative 16x plus 32. Let's try to factor this, right? Let's try to pull, right, something out. What can we pull out here? Well, it looks like we can pull out a negative 16, right? If I pull out a negative 16, what will I have? I'll be left with x, right? And I'll have minus 2, right? And our last step now, essentially all we have to do is just divide by negative 16. So let's go ahead and do that. And look now at what we have. We can rewrite this as, right, so negative 1 over 16, right, times y plus 5 squared, right? And this is going to equal x minus 2. And we actually don't need these parentheses anymore. Okay, and look how it's exactly the same, right? So here's our equation that we just got. Okay, and here it is up here. Right, so it's exactly the same. So again, we just went in reverse, and that is pretty much it. So that is how you go ahead, write a parabola in standard form, okay, when the vertex is not at the origin.